الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Jews from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we have selected a hadith in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala calls me and you Ya Ibadi Ya Ibadi O oh my beloved servant Allah Akbar it is an honor If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us, Ya Ibadi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was called Abdullah. Now, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if me and you were called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator and the creator of the entire universe, Ya Ibadi, O oh my beloved servant, we should be honored, we should be proud, we should be happy. And this hadith is known as a hadith Qudsi. The hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, or Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, so this is a hadith Qudsi. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala repeated the word Ya Ibadi ten times. Allahu Akbar. Uh, to show how much love he has for his servants. Allahu Akbar. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is Al-Wadud, the most loving Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me and you. And the mere fact that he has guided us to Islam, it is a sign of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and you. Today, whether the reciters of the kalima, it is a sign of the rahmah, naam, and the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has made us Muslims, he has made us the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us life with iman and death with iman. And on the day of qiyamah, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise all of us up with iman and include us in the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith uh, recorded by Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, in the hadith was narrated by Ittabi'in, Ittabi'i, Ittabi by the name of Abu Idris al-Khawlani. So Abu Idris al-Khawlani, he was from the Kibar al-Tabi'in. He met so many Sahaba, so many companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now amongst them Abu Dharr al-Ghifari radiallahu an. And Abu Idris al-Khawlani, he was one of the Qadi of Dimashq, of Sham at that time. Subhanallah. Now, so he narrates the, the hadith from Abu Dharr radiallahu anhu that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he mentions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith al-Qudusi, Ya ibadi, O oh, my beloved servants, inni harramtu al-dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tazalamu. I have made dhulm, oppression, Naam, uh, haram upon me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying he has made dhulm haram upon himself. He has made oppression haram prohibited upon himself. And who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent and he does not depend on his creation. Wallahu yakhluqu ma yasha wa yakhtar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who creates whosoever or whatsoever he wants. And also he chooses from his creation, you know, whomsoever he wants, uh, especially from the people. He chose so many from amongst the, uh, the people, Anbiya alayhim salatu wa taslim. Now, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody can question Allah uh, regarding what he does, but on the day of Qiyamah, each and every one of us will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one, uh, uh, one important thing that we need to know is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, Adlun, Adlun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. He's always just and he will always be just, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever he does, he does out of wisdom, out of hikmah. There is hikmah in, in whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, does. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama, fala tazalamu. O oh, my beloved servants, ya ibadi, I have made zulm, oppression, haram upon myself, and I am ordained 
uh, I am ordaining it to you or to be haram upon you as well. Fala tadhalamu, do not oppress each other. First of all, let us define zulm. What is zulm? Ma'ana zulm, wadu'u shay fi ghayr mahalli. The meaning of zulm is that you place or you put something in the wrong place. For example, you put ibadah, the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the wrong place. You find people worshipping idols. You find people worshipping the dead, you know, uh, the ancestors. You find people worshipping the sun. You find people worshipping stones. So that is the greatest zulm, which is, is known as shirk. So, wadu'u shay fi ghayr mahalli. To put something, you know, in the wrong place that is known as zulm. Now, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show me and you that on the day of Qiyamah, he will, he will be just with his servants, with us. Huh? The same way he is just with us in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just for each and every human being in this dunya. You find those people who are not believers. Allah and they are doing good in this dunya. They are giving charity, you know, they are building hospitals. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them, you know, is paying them through uh, happiness in this dunya, through good health, uh, and is paying them in different ways. But when comes akhirah, the, the, uh, the hereafter, they will not get anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it will be only for those people who believed in him, those who had iman, so that they can be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can shower his mercy upon them through iman uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so just that, you know, anybody who is not a Muslim and anybody who is a disbeliever, Naam, in this dunya, and he does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does good, uh, he helps the poor, you know, he does so many good deeds. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him in this dunya. He gives him good health, he makes him happy, he gives him shuhra, what is known as fame. Naam, people, they become famous uh, to say this person. Naam, he is not Believing in, in Allah, he's not a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving, is, is giving him status in this dunya. But when it comes to akhirah, he will find zero because he will die, or he dies, he died with, without iman, without having believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the only uh, 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 person who will enter uh, uh, Jannah will be the believers through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in the Holy Quran, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرًا يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا الله سبحانه وتعالى will not oppress anybody وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not oppress anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just, is adl, is al-muqsid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. Now, let us go to the translation of this verse. And uh, this verse you find it in Surah Kahf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ that the book of records will be placed open on the day of Qiyamah. Each and every person will be able to see his record, his book of record. Whatever deeds he have done in this dunya, he will be able to, to see on, on the day of Qiyamah. Whosoever has done good, the amount of an atom on the day of Qiyamah, he will see it. And whosoever has done evil, the amount of an atom,
You will be able to see it on the day of Qiyamah. Everything will be clear. This is how just is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala is not a zalim. He's not an oppressor. He will not oppress anybody. Now, anyone who is punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person is because he has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is because he has wronged himself. Now, so the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes because the person has wronged himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him chance, respite, different, you know, uh, opportunities for him to change his life and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person did not change. That, thus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him the punishment. So on the day of Qiyamah, the books of records will be placed open. فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ And you will see those who are disobedient towards Allah, those who are criminals, those who are, you know, sinners, you will see them shivering. They will be scared, they will be afraid because of that which will be recorded in the book. وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا And they will say, what kind of a book is this? That it does not leave any small deed or big deed, any small action or big action, except that it has recorded. Now, it has recorded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And they will find everything they have done in this world, حَاضِرَ, present, in front of them. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Your Lord will never ever oppress anybody. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made oppression haram upon himself, what about me and you? We should never ever oppress each other. We should never oppress one another. Inshallah, we'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll continue with this beautiful hadith Qudsi that is narrated, you know, for us to take a big lesson and to gratify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See you after this, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We are discussing a great hadith, hadith Qudsi, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repeated the word Ya ibadi ten times. Ya ibadi, O oh my beloved servant, me and you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us ten times in this hadith. But we will not discuss the entire hadith today, inshallah. We will discuss it in parts. In parts, so this part one of the hadith al-Qudsi in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi. Naam. Ya ibadi, inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama. Fala tadhalama. So this is the first part of the hadith in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O oh, my beloved servants, I have made dhulm, oppression haram upon myself, and I have made it haram upon yourselves. Fala tadhalama. Do not oppress each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yunus, Regarding himself being just, Inna Allah la yadlimu nasa shay'a. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not oppress anybody in anything. Allahu Akbar. Allah ta'ala does not oppress anybody, even a bit, even a bit. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just adlun. No? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wama Allahu yuridu dhulman lil ibad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want Dhulm, oppression upon his servants. Now, so the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be sincere towards Allah and also should uh, uh, develop uh, uh, love in their hearts for each other so that they can have compassion towards one another so that they can be kind towards each other. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in this hadith Qudsi. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a zalim upon anybody, he is teaching me and you that we should not be oppressors to anyone. You find husbands oppressing their wives, you find wives oppressing their husbands. You find parents oppressing their children. 
and you find children oppressing their parents. On the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do justice. Any person that we have oppressed in this dunya, any person that we have wronged in, the, in this dunya, and we did not settle the matter now that we're still alive, comes Qiyamah, the person will never ever enter Jannah until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes what is known Qisas. Now, he will do justice. Huh? He will judge between the two and see that justice is done. You'll find sometimes you have got a court case in this dunya, but because you did not have, you know, enough uh, cash for you to support your, your, um, uh, your stand at court, uh, you end up losing the case. But it's not the case on the day of Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Malik Yawmiddin. He is the owner of the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will do judgment, who will pass judgment amongst his creation on the day of Qiyamah. So, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never ever uh, oppress anybody. And those who are oppressing people in this world, those who are causing pain into the hearts of the people in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he accepts the du'as of the oppressed ones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he punishes the oppressors right in this dunya before akhirah. And when he comes on the day of qiyamah, he will find a painful and severe punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A poet says, Tanamu aynaka wal mathlumu muntabihun. Yadu'u alayka wa aynullahi lam tanami. That your eyes, you as, a, as, as the oppressor, your eyes at night close, you sleep and you snore at night. While the eyes of the oppressed one, the person that you have oppressed, his eyes are opened. He is awake, he cannot sleep. He is thinking, you know, he's going through pain in his heart because of the oppression that you have inflicted or you are inflicting on him. Now, sometimes a children who are orphans, his parents has passed away, he has lost everybody and everything. So you as his kafil, you as somebody who's in charge of these orphans, you must be very much careful in the way you treat them. Treat them like your own children. Take them to your custody like your own children. Love them. Look after them. Wallahi, there will be so much blessings from Allah. Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend upon you. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. Why? Remember that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, he was an orphan and he, he used to, to love orphans. He used to? To love orphans. And he encouraged us to love those people who have lost their parents, those children who have no father, no mother, that we become like their parents and look after them with so much love, like an ordinary child who has got his both parents alive, taking a good care from his both parents. So on the day of Qiyamah, I mean, the, 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 the poet says that your eyes are sleeping but not the eyes of the oppressed person. Now, because يَدْعُوا عَلَيْكَ وَعَيْنُ اللَّهِ لَمْ تَنَمِي He is busy cursing you, making dua against you. He is not sleeping. Why? Because he is in pain. The heart is paining. The heart is crying. Now, his eyes are tearing. Why? Because of you. Uh, so at night he is complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not close, they're always opened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sooner or later, will respond to the oppressed uh, du'as, to the oppressed one's prayers, to his cry, he will see that he does justice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yadlimu nasa shay'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not oppress the people, even a bit. No? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not love zulm, oppression upon anybody. Now, so that's why he made it haram upon himself and he has made it haram upon his servants. In the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-zulmu zulumatun yawma al-qiyamah. 
that dhulm, oppression, will be a means, a cause of darkness on the day of Qiyamah. Now, a person will be in darkness on the day of Qiyamah through what? The dhulm, oppression that he has done. Sometimes because a person has got a big army, a person has got, you know, power, he's got influence in the dunya, he's got supporters, people who will back him up. So he goes around and oppresses people. But he forgets that he, his life one day will come to an end. Now, his kingdom and whatever he possesses will not avail him in any way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will take charge on the day of Qiyamah. Allah ta'ala will say, Ana al-Jabbar, Ana al-Dayyan. Naam, Aina muluk al-Ard, Aina muluk al-Dunya. Where are the muluk, the kings of the dunya? I am the Jabbar, I am the king. Naam, Maliki yawm al-Din, Aw Maliki yawm al-Din. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the judge or the king of the day of judgment, the owner of the day of judgment. Now, so those who have oppressed people in the dunya, when they come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be disgraced, they will be humili humiliated. And also on the day of Qiyamah for any person who has um, oppressed somebody, he will never be allowed to enter Jannah until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes Qisas, takes Qisas and he judges between the two. Now, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that comes to mind, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked his sahaba, his companions, his students, the ones who learned directly from him, those who went all over the world spreading the deen of al-Islam, the sahaba radiyallahu anhum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ikhtarahum wallahu li suhbat nabiyyihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen these sahaba, these companions, to, to become the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa li nashri dinihi. And for the spreading of the deen. Today we are Muslims, alhamdulillah, through the barakah of the da'wah of the sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, and the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked his sahaba, O oh my beloved sahaba, atadruna manil muflisu. Do you, my beloved sahaba, knows who is a bankrupt person? Who is a loser? Qalu al-muflisu fina man la dirham lahu wa la mata. According to our understanding, O oh Rasul of Allah, according to our understanding, according to our limited knowledge, a muflis, a bankrupt person, is the one who does not have even a penny. Nothing, he has nothing, no goods, he has lost everything. Now, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just to teach us, to teach his sahaba, he says, بَلْ أَلْمُفْلِسُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي مَنْ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِصَلَاةٍ وَصِيَامٍ وَزَكَاةٍ وَيَأْتِي وَقَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَأَكَلَ مَالَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا وَسَفَكَ دَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا فَيُعْطَ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ فَإِذَا فَنِّتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُقْضَى مَا عَلَيْهِ أُخِذَتْ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ فَطُرِحَتْ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ طُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ The muflis is a person, the bankrupt person, the doza, is a person who will come on the day of Qiyamah with rewards of salah, rewards of sadaqah, zakah, rewards of fasting, rewards of hajj. He will come with lots of rewards he have done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, he accused this person falsely. He used to hit people, you know, he used to kill people, he used to insult people, he used to do evil, you know, he used to cause pain to people. So on the day of Qiyamah, people will come in lines, in rows, and they will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to complain, Ya Allah, this person that you want to enter him into Jannah, he has done this to me in the dunya. He has oppressed me in the dunya. He has insulted me in the dunya. He owed me money in the dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take all the rewards, the, good, the rewards of your good deeds, and will be, he will give to those that you have oppressed. And if there's still more people coming and complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take their evil deeds and throw them onto you. They will enter into Jannah and you will be thrown into the fire of hell. So this is the outcome 
of oppression, of oppressing people, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only people, even animals. We are not allowed to oppress even animals. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path, keep us on sirat al mustaqim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it such that we love each other and we do not oppress each other so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah uh, can descend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings can be showered upon us until we meet again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.